Good day, everybody. Good day. It's not good morning. It's already dark outside. <laughs> We're sitting here at a quick trip just outside of Duluth, Minnesota. I've got a new load behind me. Yesterday was just a crazy day. Crazy day. I, I sort of filled you in at the end of the vlog there. I haven't had a day that was that filled up and that busy for a oh, very long time. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. So this morning I woke up, I got unloaded, ran over here to Duluth, got reloaded with some cast steel, heavy load, but the weights are just perfect. And I was so tired, I just had to stop for a nap. So we pulled over here at the quick trip and just had a quick little nap. And now I've got to drive all the way back home yet. We're back to our yard. I won't make it home tonight, it'll be way too late, but I need to at least get back to our yard and uh, get this trailer where it's supposed to be. And then tomorrow morning I'm gonna head home uh, for a quick reset and then we're gonna do another loop here. I've got another load in Kenora waiting for me and uh, I believe another reload down here. Either way, hopefully it's not quite as rushed as it was yesterday, because that took a lot out of me, but hey, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? You gotta make a penny. And if you wanna make a shiny nickel, oh, you gotta work yourself pretty hard. You see, the numbers look good, and then it gets into your bank account, and then everybody gets their hands on it, namely, the government. <laughs> and then you gotta fail your taxes, right? Ah, oh, well. Tax season's coming, you guys ready? You guys ready? Oh boy. What a time of year. Uh, just a couple of months now. So while I'm here at the quick trip, before we actually get driving into the night, I'm gonna put a little bit of fuel in my tanks. I have just below a third of a tank or third of my fuel left in both tanks. And I've gotta make it to Grand Forks. That's where the cheapest fuel is on my route on the way back. Uh, the price for me here is $3.44 a gallon. In Grand Forks, it's $3.10 a gallon on my fuel cart. So I want to fuel just enough here just to get there comfortably because I don't want to risk running out of fuel. That, that's a nightmare. That would ruin my whole night, ruin my whole trip, and I probably wouldn't get home tomorrow then. Let's just not think about that. Let's just play it safe. Let's put in 40, 50 gallons here. And that'll be able to get us over there and we'll fill up all the way there where we can get some cheaper juice. Put on my pylon Halloween costume. That's what I should go for. So I should go and dress up for as Halloween, right? Just be a pylon, construction pylon. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? What do we got here? Diesel, 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 diesel number two. That's the one I want. I want number two. Okay. We could put diesel number one in. We'll go with diesel number two. Diesel number one is for really cold winter days, and it's not gonna be that cold yet this week. I love that the new normal at truck stops is bean to cup. So I just bought 50 gallons. I put it into my driver's side tank. So that fuel gauge here is gonna go down a little bit as the fuel equalizes out between the tanks. If you didn't know this about semi trucks both fuel tanks are connected so you put fuel in one they'll eventually level out so that both tanks like it'll run to the other one and level out so i just put 50 gallons on my driver's side one it'll even out in no time my fuel gauge that i have here is in my driver's side tank because that's where the fuel gets sucked out of so 
if I were to be low on fuel in my driver's side tank, it's most important to know that. Because my passenger side is just a holding tank. It'll trickle over to the driver's side, and from the driver's side it gets sucked into the engine or sucked into my bunk heater or my engine heater. That's the important one to, to know what the level's at. The passenger one, not quite as important, but uh, I do have a gauge for that one. I just need to get it, uh, get it fixed. Right now, it's... <laughs> It's just for show right now. It's just to fill up a spot. Uh, I, it's better than having a hole in the dash, right? With no gauge. So our next big stop that we're gonna stop is Grand Forks Flying J. Like I was telling you, that's where we're gonna grab the rest of our fuel. And then we're gonna mosey on our way back. I'll be back in the yard tonight after midnight sometime too late to go home. I'll just quickly sleep in the truck and first thing in the morning I'll run home. That's what happens when you have dogs. If I walk into the house at like two in the morning the dogs go nuts. The baby wakes up, my wife wakes up and it's not exactly the welcome home party I I planned because no one likes being woken up in the middle of the night especially if you wake the baby up too. <laughs> no, bad idea Josh. Go home in the morning so that everybody can get their sleep. Because sleep is important, very important. turn right but you got to turn left to turn right turn left and go around so you can go right I 
I didn't need to buy 50 gallons, but I wanted to be safe. I didn't want to run out of fuel or get stranded somewhere and have very little fuel in my tanks. know that I'm fueling because they like to know what are you fueling are you fueling your truck truck Josh are you fueling your truck right now let me know none of your business government but whatever oh I really don't want to go stand out there in the wind but Josh we're Canadian this is what we were born for this is what we thrive in Blizzards are who we are. It doesn't help if you say it out loud. It still doesn't make it. Just because I'm a Canadian doesn't mean I like snow. I'm just going to say it. Okay? I like palm trees. I don't like snow. Especially when there's wind with snow in it. But I have no choice. I already live pretty far south. Like, I live as pretty much right at the southern border in Canada. They won't let me move any further south. <laughs> ah, it's okay. I don't want to complain. It could be worse. It could be a lot worse. We live in a good part of the world. We don't have alligators. We don't have tarantulas. We don't have poisonous snakes. We don't have hurricanes. We don't have earthquakes. We have a few tornadoes though, and we got blizzards, but it could be worse. You could have a, a hurricane, blizzard, tornado with flying alligators. That would be much worse, much worse. So it's not so bad, it's not so bad here. I can't feel my fingers and I can't feel my face and I can't feel my legs, but I'm alive, right? Look at the positive. I'm alive. 138 gallons. I had to move over the pump I was at over there. Didn't work. So I moved over to this pump right beside me here. <laughs> that one didn't work either. Went on to our last option all the way at the other end. There's only three available here. This one worked. We got our fuel, 138 gallons. Now let's go home. Well, we'll, we'll get out there. The, the blizzard, well, I wouldn't call it a blizzard yet. A little bit of blowing snow if it gets worse or too bad i'm gonna pull in probably at loves further down the road but uh if it just stays like this all the way home or even gets better then uh we'll just go all the way back yeah because then i can i can get back tonight yet and sleep at the shop or something we'll figure it out as we go okay one thing at a time okay got myself another coffee we're gonna keep going I checked the weather up ahead, and this blowing snow is supposed to stop uh, like 30 miles up. It's not even that bad right now, so I'm just on the wind. All right, there we go. So we're going to keep going. Also, I checked the weather for tomorrow here in Grand Forks, and it's supposed to get a lot worse, a lot worse here by tomorrow morning. So I don't want to be here for that. south of Texas. I don't know further north into this yet. You guys heard about the polar vortex that's coming? Watch out. It's our gift to you from northern Canada. It was unwanted to us too, don't worry. We didn't want it either. But whoever ordered it, you can have it. I don't want it. They're taking up so much space here with all this construction equipment. It'll be nice once this is all done. 
they lied. It is not getting better, it is in fact getting worse. So my exit is coming up right up here. We're pulling into the loves, calling it a night. I guess technically they didn't lie. It's not actually snowing. They just forgot to mention that all the snow that's already on the ground is blowing all over the place. That would have been nice to know. They didn't mention that. And it wasn't that bad going out of Grand Forks. It just started to get pretty heavy here. And we're just coming up to the loves. I'm, I'm not going past. I hope it's not all packed full of trucks already, though it probably is. It's time to get off the road. It's coming up here very soon. Ah, there's the lights already. You can see it off to the left. Lights of the sign. It's 50 kilometers an hour. Four hundred meters. Take exit one eighty-seven toward Drayton. Yes, ma'am. Don't have to tell me twice. Get me off this road. No, thank you. I choose life. Take exit one eighty-seven. I prefer to remain among the living. I don't need to get home that bad. Though I'd love to be at home right now. 300 meters, sharp left onto North Dakota 66 West. The scary thing is that there's trucks. At least three big trucks that just went flying past me. Left me in a complete whiteout. Couldn't see where I was going. And I know for a fact that they couldn't see where they were sharp going. Sharp left onto North Dakota 66 West. But they were going like 60 miles an hour blind through a snowstorm. Why do people do that every single time you see that? Why? Why? I, I, I don't get it. Well, I hope there's somewhere here I can park. If not, I'm making a spot. I can't keep going in this. Take the next left onto 160th Avenue Northeast. Then your destination will be on the left. Where is it? Where is the left? Oh, here it is. I think. Yeah, that looks right. Oh, man. Crazy, crazy. Less than a quarter mile of visibility, just suddenly. It's minus 18 Celsius outside too, so it's uh, getting pretty cold. It's not a good night to get stranded. Your destination is on the left. I, I figured that out, but thank you. How am I going to get around? I guess I'll go through the pumps and then go around. This is crazy. I hope we don't get snowed in here overnight. Oh, there's a big snow drift right here. Oh boy. No, I don't want to go through that. We don't get completely snowed in here. Just back up and drive into the lot off to my right. I think there's lots of parking over there from what I can see. Yeah, I gotta take this way, this is always better. See that truck that nosed in right there? I'm gonna back in right beside him. I'm gonna do a little loop here. Get 
stuck in the morning. Look at these guys. Hey, that's one of the guys that went blowing past me. This guy right here. He's going back out there. He stopped in here for fuel. He's getting back out there on the highway. Good luck, bud. Yikes. You're nuts. There's another guy coming out here. He's going out too. I've got to show this to you on my better camera here. Look at that. I think I got a pretty good spot. Straight out the driveway here. So if anybody wants to park beside me, they got a straight shot in. Just back right in. A straight shot out in the morning. I can't believe those trucks went out. Man, I could barely get in here. They're going back out on the highway. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I am very happy I got off the road. I was pretty intent on pushing it all the way through back to home. But I'm very glad that I decided to stop in here. Like, look at that. The building is right over there. You can barely see the building. Oh, man. I guess I will uh, let everybody know that needs to know that I have parked for the night. We'll see the government once again they like to know what are you doing why are you stopped what you doing why aren't you driving right now have you seen the weather out there i wanted to be at home but i live in the north this is how it is going to bed ah, just punching everything into my e-log there and sending it away certifying it yeah, so I was telling you that that guy, uh, a couple of guys that had just blown past me, right? That one truck that I saw that I just showed you leaving here, that reefer truck, that Freight X or whatever the name was on the side, that truck, I, I was doing about 40 mile an hour, four ways on. Everybody behind me was doing the same thing in front of me, very slow. I was just trying to get here at that point. And, uh,. <laughs> The weather forecast lied to me. I looked at the forecast. Let's look at it again. Yeah. It says it's cloudy. It doesn't say anything about the wind. Nothing. Moderate wind, it says. Moderate. Precipitation. Zero. It says there's no precipitation right now. Right where I am. I just showed you where I am, right? What? I've never seen the weather forecast that completely wrong. I trusted that. I, I thought that it might be a little bit, you know, winter conditions. I didn't expect this at all. Why should I? The weather said it was going to be fine. Luckily, we had a backup plan of where to stop, and I used my backup plan. Got a parking spot here. Yeah, it's getting worse. When I parked here, I could still see the building. I cannot see the building now. I can barely see the pumps. Anyway, what I was saying is that guy that you just saw leaving, going back out on the highway in this weather, we were doing about 40 miles an hour. I He had to be doing a minimum of 60 miles an hour. And we were traveling this way, right? So he's coming past me on my driver's side here. And the wind was coming from my driver's side over to the passenger side. So what that means is when he passed me, he kicked up all that snow behind him and it comes right over all the traffic he just passed. Left us in a complete whiteout. Couldn't see a thing. I had to just hold the steering wheel and pray that I hope that I'm staying in the lane. Thank goodness they got those rumble strips. You can sort of rely on those. 
not when there's a lot of snow on the road, but you know, you get too close there, it'll go zzz, 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 and then you can sort of correct yourself. But there's none going this way until you get to the other shoulder on that side. So why do people do that? So what I do anyways, and I'm not perfect, I'm not this great guy or anything, but this has happened to me so often that this is what I've started doing. If it's snowing and there's snow on the road, even if it's not snowing, if there's snow in the passing lane, and I know that if I get in that passing lane, I'm gonna be kicking up a lot of snow. If the wind is coming from the driver's side over to my passenger side as I'm driving down the road, I know that if I go up in that lane, I'm gonna give the driver I'm passing a whiteout. Whoever's in that vehicle has a family at home, most likely. They have someone who loves them, who's waiting for them at home. It could be my wife with my kid in the back. It could be your wife with your kid in the back. It could be your husband. It could be your 90-year-old mother trying to get home. It could be your aunt and uncle. It could be your friend. Why? Why go past them and completely blind them and put their li life at risk? Well, so that you can get by and keep going a little bit faster because you're way more important than their life? I'm not speaking to you specifically. Don't take this like I'm talking. I know you guys don't do this, but you all know who I'm talking about. Like these guys, cowboy truckers, I don't know, super truckers. I don't know what the name for them is, but the guys who don't seem to understand that the rest of us want to get home alive, right? So we'll leave it there. It's still getting worse since I've parked here. I feel good about parking. I'm so glad I, I came in here and got parked. I just, right now my worry is that when I wake up in the morning, I hope that I'm not snowed in. So what I'm gonna do, in this situation, what I do anyways, is I sort of roll back and forth about six feet. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I pack down the snow underneath my tires. And then I park right about in the middle of that six foot packing that I just did. So I have three feet in front of my tires packed and three feet behind them. So it might, it'll fill up with snow, but I know that underneath that is packed, right? So in the morning, if I have a lot of snow around me and I need to rock myself back and forth a little bit, there's a much better chance that I'll be able to get some momentum rocking myself back and forth to get out of here. Another little sneaky tip there that I snuck in right at the end just for you. That one's free. But uh, all the other tips I give, I ask for uh, kindly for just a, a like on my video as payment and a subscription to my channel on YouTube here. If you go down below, a lot of you aren't subscribed yet. I take subscriptions as payment for all of my, 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 my tips, whether they help or not. Uh, not everything's free. But subscribing is free and liking is free. It's just the effort that I guess I'm asking for. Just that little, little bit of an effort. You just gotta tap your screen a few times or if you're on a desktop, move your mouse around a little bit. I'm not asking for much. I'll see you right here in the morning. Uh, don't forget to tune in. Let's see what it looks like. Am I gonna be snowed in? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. I'll see you then.